turbo testing our LBZ Dino Mule. We've got the STR done, we've got the 64 done, stock turbo done. We saved the 67 for last because we knew there might be a risk. This engine has 100% over injectors in it, 10 millimeter stroker pump, and we've got dozens of passes at 660, 670 horsepower testing the 64. We put the 67 on and Dan comes running to me and he says, there's a literal geyser of oil coming out of the engine oil fill cap. That's in the middle of a dyno run. So he's going full throttle, 3000 RPM, blows the oil cap off, shoots oil all over the wall, all over everything in the dyno cell. Some lessons are more expensive than others. Can I guarantee this failure is going to happen anytime you run this engine at 750 horsepower? No. This was our sixth or seventh dyno pull at that power level. We'd run dozens of tests at 660 to 670 horsepower prior to that. I think the engine was very safe at that level. We knew we were playing with fire over 700 horsepower on this thing, especially with the type of testing we were doing. Cylinder three just couldn't do it. We put a hole in the number three piston. There it is. Pressure from the number three chamber then accessed the crankcase and forcibly removed the oil fill cap along with most of the oil from the engine in a catastrophic event. On this episode of Diesel Insights, find out exactly how much horsepower it takes to make an LBZ barf oil all over the inside of your dyno cell. In this failure event, we had the benefit of having the data logger running. We also had EGT, drive pressure, boost pressure, lambda, all of our usual goodies. So we get a really good shot of the moment of failure, which is actually pretty rare. Um, not so in this case, we have actual data. So let's talk about the day of. We're testing this 67 millimeter turbocharger. Uh, this is some updates we might be doing to our um, Stealth 67 lineup in the future. And so we're running the engine around 740 horsepower. This was our sixth or seventh dyno sweep. Uh, we had been running some spool up tests and some other testing uh, along those lines as well. But this is a sweep. So we're running from 2000 RPM up to 3500 RPM to get a picture of the total horsepower available at this fuel rate. Okay, so moment of failure. We start the pull, 2200 RPM. We're coming through the pull, building horsepower, 690, 700, 720. We have this peak right here at 739, which is pretty typical. It's at 3272 RPM. And then we get this drop, poof down to 622, it holds and then drops again, and then holds and then drops again. And what's probably happening there is pieces of the piston are coming away from the piston. Uh, kind, of, kind of a neat story to see play out uh, in real life right there. Very rarely are you logging horsepower during an engine failure. And so to see those steps is it's interesting. It's expensive, but it's interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what was happening at that point. So 564 grams per second of airflow, quite a bit of airflow, turbochargers ripping. Temperature EGTs were at 1650 degrees exhaust gas temperatures. Uh, we had been over 1600 degrees since 2900 RPM. So yeah, it's hot. Um, 1650 degrees. Boost is up there. We're about 36 pounds of boost. Fuel rate is up there. We're at 2100 microseconds on 100% over injector, um, well into the 200s for MM3. Um, drive pressure, we're at about 63 pounds of drive pressure. Interesting thing is that these aren't numbers that are altogether different from our 64 millimeter testing. I'm sure we're running more fuel now on the 67 to support the power level we're at, but these EGTs, these drive pressures and boost numbers, yeah, they're a little bit higher, but they're not like astronomically higher than um, stuff we were running before. And like I said, we did have a dozen runs under our belt before this thing let go. So I think it's, it's you know, just kind of an accrual on this engine that unfortunately has not had an easy life, especially at our hands. And, you know, that 650 to 670 horsepower range seems to be a pretty comfortable place for the LBZ. We usually coach our customers, like, if tuned well, good injector, clean tune, you can probably get away with an engine running at that power level for quite a while. Forever? Probably not, but for a while, yeah. Uh, years. 700 plus horsepower, you are on borrowed time. 
Um, and we, we demonstrated that to ourselves this one. Um, 740 horsepower was the number. We got about six pulls at 740 horse and that was it. Let's just talk about things that this, this failure wasn't. Okay, this was not an overheating engine failure. This was not an overheating oil failure. We have our oil temperature pretty well under control on the dyno. Um, I think this is just, this is the limit of these engines when you run them and make passes kind of failure. Like if we were drag racing this engine, it would have blown up in similar fashion at a similar number of passes on the drag strip. I think I can say that pretty confidently. Probably turning the power down would have made it last longer. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think there's a lot it could have done to keep it in good health. You know, we're running 100% over injector. We're running a pretty conservative timing number. We're running pretty conservative tune-up as far as the power goes. Now, yeah, we're pushing it a little bit on the Lambda side. I mean, Lambda was below 1.1, so it was getting kind of smoky to get that number. I suspect we would have got five times the lifespan out of it, running it. 50 horsepower less, I, th I think. I think we would have been able to test five or six more turbos before we may have had a similar failure at 670 horse or 680 horse. Yeah. I just don't think it was going to let go at that level. I mean, we had, we beat this motor at that power level. Between 650 and 680, we've got dozens and dozens of, of dyno sweeps on this thing and never had a hiccup. And then the sixth sweep in at 750, it lets go. I think that's a pretty telltale signal that it's not meant to be up there. And when I say testing a turbo, five to six turbos, I mean we're hitting 80 load RPM cells for 10 seconds at a piece to get toe test data. We're doing spool up data. We're doing sweep data. I mean, it's torture. You're, you're getting the engine run very hard a lot. Um, and this engine has had a lot of that. <laughs> so, um, you know, if, if you want it to live, I would say, you know, keep it, keep it below 700 horsepower on the LBZ and you'll have a much better chance. You know, none of this is new. These engines put holes in pistons pretty regularly uh, when guys push them too hard. I think what's different about this engine is that it has such a well-documented history of being incrementally stepped up in power and then to have it shell with everything documented is kind of a really neat experience to see because we, we know we know how well it handled all the other steps up the stairs and now we got to the 750th step and we know what happens there. So we're going to pull the engine apart, take a look at it. Most likely it'll get a set of rods and pistons and be put back in action. Um, probably a set of Waggler Street Fighter rods and some uh, fingers oval bull pistons would be my guess. We'll try and keep compression around 16 and a half to one. I want things to be as close to stock as possible. I just need the engine to be a little more robust to test the 67 millimeter chargers. If you as an enthusiast appreciate this level of data, this level of detail, this amount of testing, please consider supporting the business when you go to purchase your next turbocharger, fuel system, or tuning product for your truck. We would certainly appreciate it. We do our best to earn that business. We have world-class customer service, and we spend a lot of time, energy, and money on developing, building, and validating our products. So check out DuramaxTuner.com or give us a call, 815-568-7920. We would be happy to talk to you about your truck, your goals, take you to the next step. I'm Nick, thanks for watching.